We are in the far western side of the Panhandle, just outside of Willis, Oklahoma, and joining me is Stuart Hutchinson, and we're here at the Hutchinson uh, Farm and Garden, and you guys have been growing quite the garden out here in the middle of nowhere. So how long have you been doing this? Tell me about it. Two, two years. We've been doing the big garden. Okay. And you grow not just for your family, but for a lot of other people around yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what are you, you're using plasticulture and drip irrigation. Tell me about why you decided to do that out here. Because uh, we was using sprinklers before and they wasn't getting the water down that we needed and, and it growed weeds everywhere and wasn't making a good enough garden. Yeah, so the plasticulture obviously helps with control the weeds a little bit, reduce some of the yes. uh, evaporation and, mm -hmm. and you have a little bit of wind out here. We do. <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> okay, okay. So this is a calm day out here? It, yes. Okay, so um, I'm glad I brought hairspray, but you know, you've wrapped your tomatoes. Tell me a little bit about that and why you've done that. Right. Well, when our plants come out of the, the uh, greenhouses, well, they're, they're kind of soft, so we put that plastic around them to guard from the wind, mm -hmm. and uh, it also creates a kind of a greenhouse effect in there. And it works as a windbreak. So mm -hmm. uh, are you going to remove the plastic then as it gets yes. warmer? Yeah, when stuff? they start putting on tomatoes, we remove the plastic. Okay, so. all right. Um, and, and you said you tried black plastic. Yeah. How did... it, it just, it, it made them grow tall, but they were pretty, pretty weak still. Oh, okay, so. okay. So when you took that off, then yeah. they snapped yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Now, this is interesting. Being from central Oklahoma, we don't typically think of staking pepper plants. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you've had to... Yep, same thing as with the tomatoes. So, so you know, they're a smaller plant, but still they kind of battle yep. the wind out here. Yep, it, if, if you take that off one day, they'll be fried. Okay, so, so will you take the plastic off of those yeah, also Yeah, once eventually? they get to going good, we'll take the plastic off of them too. So. Okay, well, you've got quite a garden, and, and how long does it take to maintain this size garden? Well, it, it I don't know, we do work on it every day, so. Yeah. Uh, you don't keep track of the hours. Not really, no. <laughs> but, but you were saying you sell to a lot of people. What is kind of your area that you sell to out right. here? Well, we'll, we'll reach Boise City and Clayton, New Mexico and Dalhart, Texas. All right, so you are a tri-state gardener. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stuart, thank you for sharing your garden with us and we enjoyed being out here. All right, thank you. Beaver County and joining us is Nikolai uh, Starzak and he is an OSU Botany master's student and Nikolai you're studying the flora um, here in Beaver County. Why right. Beaver County? It's the least studied uh, county floristically in Oklahoma which okay. is wild. All right and there's a lot of diversity we're seeing. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about that diversity. You have a small plant here you want to show us. Yeah this is probably one of the smallest milkweeds in Oklahoma. This is plains milkweed. Um, so we think about milkweeds being food for monarchs, but this one's so small, I can't imagine a caterpillar bothering with it. <laughs> but there are several of them out here. It almost kind of looks right. like a young liatris starting, but yeah. uh, it's got some flowers. So it's a white flower that it'll mm -hmm. come on? Yeah, a tiny cluster of little white flowers. And how much bigger will it get? That's its maximum size, pretty much. Really? Okay. Yeah. I have noticed that the plants seem to be a little bit shorter out here. <laughs> oh yeah, the wind keeps them down. <laughs> yeah. So you've got another milkweed? Yeah, that's right. All right. Before we get to the other milkweed, I want to ask you about this yellow flower here. Color yeah. kind of grabs your attention out here. What, Absolutely. What is this one? This is plain zinnia, zinnia grandiflora. It really likes hard packed sandy soil, so it just forms these clumps, and I think it's really, really beautiful. Beautiful. Of course, y'all did get some rain last night, so. It... Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's our milkweed. This is Asclepius latifolia, that's the broadleaf milkweed. Uh -huh. So just a major contrast, that little plains milkweed. It's yeah. got big sprays of pink to green flowers. And very opposite leaves. I mean, looking down on it, it almost looks like a, a box, really. Yeah, definitely. So do you know about whether caterpillars are enjoying this? Yeah, every time I see these, there's always something nibbling on them. 
All right. So, Nikolai, what is this that we're walking in here? This is all wild American licorice. So, the roots of these guys are... Oh, there's a little walking stick. Oh, wow. Um, the roots of these guys are great for chewing on. They add it to chewing tobacco and it makes a great tea. Uh-huh. Just boil it in water. It's and the add, root or the stems that you're... The root right up to the stem. Okay. You can chew on it. It forms these big colonies down here. So it likes to take over a little bit. It, <laughs> we are, we're surrounded by it. Of course, it's got seeds on it. So it had a flower. What was the flower like? Uh, it's a little spike of white um, pea-like flowers. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the legume family? Yep. All right. Definitely. So this has a flavor. I'm not really tasting the flavor to it. it tastes a little wild, but it's great for road trips. <laughs> I'd rather just regular licorice, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a, quite a mass of it. This was a disturbed site that mm -hmm. it's kind of taken off on. Yep. Um, and there's one other one up here that I recognize. This is Daughter. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about it here, though. Yeah. So Daughter is a parasitic vine. Uh, closely related to morning glory and it actually it can smell the different plants around it and so it prefers which ones it thinks will make a better hold as it climbs up and it attaches to the stem and sucks up the nutrients so you can see it's not green so it's not getting anything from the sun so it can't produce any chlorophyll on its own and so it really is a parasitic plant that exactly. is stealing from these nearby plants yep so if you have this in your in your landscape or anything it's one to go ahead and get rid of yeah It'll, it'll take over, right? I mean, it gets pretty large. Yeah, I think it's cool looking, but. It is, and it's our favorite color, orange. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nikolai, thanks for sharing with us all the diversity, and uh, it's good to know that somebody's documenting all of this. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.